What is going on guys, DBG here. In this video, we are going to be doing gameplay with the Dominique Wilkins card. So, Dominique, looking at his stats, using him to shoot around. Honestly, he does not seem like he's the greatest card in the world. Which is why I'm going to do a gameplay with him now. And I'm realistically, I'm going to end up comparing him. I've used his Opal a few times and I'm not even the biggest fan of his Opal. But I'm going to be comparing him to what I described as in my Yanis video, the Big Four. The big four of the small forwards, which are Paul George, Yanis, LeBron, um, and Kevin Durant. And then to a slightly lesser extent, in the slightly lower tier, you've got Luca, Hudson, Bruce Bowen, Kersey, um, Xavier, Peja, um, Ingram even, Latrell, Sprewell, Pierce, Tatum, and the rest are kind of a, a fair bit below that in terms of like how great they are. So. I'm just gonna say whether he's in the top tier of small forwards, which is the big four in my opinion, or is he in the second tier, which is like just below that. Actually, I'm gonna say second tier is like Luca, um, Xavier, Kersey, Bowen maybe. And then probably third tier is like Blackman, King, Hudson, um, Bridgman, other Luca. It's pretty well. So, is he in those top three tiers, or is he even worse? Anyway, the team we have got is Shea Gilles Alexander at the one. We got Clay at the two, LeBron at the four, Dunk at the five, and Dominique the three. The bench we have got Gilbert Arenas, Terrence Ross, Paul George, Giannis, George Mike, and JoJo, J.R. Smith, and Ray LaFrance. So, yeah. Anyway, now let's go over the stats of Dominique. He's 6 7, 98 offense, 90 defensive overall. Only two Hall of Fame badges. And you know what? They're the exact same two Hall of Fame badges as Terrence Ferguson. And they just, them two Hall of Fame badges don't count. I'm pretty sure Derek Jones is it from the Miami Heat. Um, he has the exact same badges, his Sapphire. Like these are two terrible Hall of Fame badges. They don't even count these two. He has got 22 gold badges. He had difficult chance. He's got ice in his veins, flexible release. He's got silver downhill. So he's got no quick first step badge. He has got no um, quick draw badge. He's got no range extender, which is not great. He's got a 79 shot three, 92 shot mid, though is good. Decent post fadeaway. Really good driving dunk of 98. Problem is, is that will he be able to get to the basket without quick first step? Okay, ball handle of 80. Um, decent block steal, decent perimeter, decent interior defense, decent rebound. He's got fairly decent speed, super on acceleration, decent out of quickness. I'm not gonna lie, overall stats are so well rounded. Like. Apart from like rebounding and interior defense and block, pretty much all of his stats are above like 76 or post hook doesn't really matter too much. All of his like wing stats are above 80, which is fairly well rounded. But for a card without the elite badges, he's going to be relying on animation. So anyway, now we're going to go onto the hot zones and release for Dominique. Then we're going to get onto the game. So Dominique is in hot zones, one spot outside of three and most spots inside the three. So obviously Dominique Wilkins Opal doesn't have quick draw, so I can't just give this card quick draw. And I'm not going to lie, this release is slow. His release is super, super slow. And it's like once you get used to using all your players a quick draw, it's hard to use players without quick draw. It's slow and it's not very good. I wish they kept, gave Dominique the release he's had in previous years, but no, they gave him a complete, complete new release this year. He had like something very similar to base 8 in previous years since like 2K14, and they decided to completely change that and give him some like weird big man type release that is super slow. But again, because Opal doesn't have quick draw, we are not going to see a Dominique this year with quick draw unless they give him another opal at the end of the year, which is not a good sign. Shooting is very, very important in the game. But the annoying thing is, though, is that they didn't give him quick first step. To be fair, if they did give him quick first step, just that one badge, it would make that 1,000 game triple tread offline grind absolutely pointless. But either way, he's still going to be great going to the basket. He's going to be great on the fast break. And once he gets ahead of steam, like there's not going to be much stopping him. However, he can't. he's not a guy you can really ISO with because... Again, he doesn't have over 86 ball control, and he doesn't have, obviously, um, quick first step gold. And also, the fact is, is that you can kind of give him a little bit of space as well. You don't need to uh, play too tight on him, which again is a downside because of how slow his release is. So while he's a guy who I take against a terrible opponent, you can do fairly well against. I think I'm gonna struggle if I do come up against a good opponent with him. Because while he does certain things well, there's a lot of things he doesn't do well. I'm surprised they didn't even give him like whatever the equivalent of posterizer is Hall of Fame this year or even Lob City Finisher. Like that would have been a lot like, that would have been usable because Lob Cheese is still not overpowered, but it's still usable this year. So anyway, now it's just Green 3. And now let's get on to the game. Okay, so we are playing as Stefan Marbury, Chris Mullen, fully Evoed, Kevin Garnett, 
not as good Yan as the one we have and Paul Pierce. So Paul Pierce is not the best defender, but not bad either. So this is not going to be an easy matchup, but we definitely have a fairly big advantage team wise here. Okay, this court is kind of annoying. By kind of, I mean very, very annoying. Uh, let's attack the basket. Dominique puts it up and he can't make it. He probably should have passed the ball or shoot the fade, I guess. Can't hit it, but that was not the worst shot in the world. Literally a full white as well. And we let Giannis jam it on us. I don't know what's going on so far in this game. It's like my mind is in two different places. Okay, let's go behind the back. Spin. See where they want to play it. By leaving Duncan wide open. And probably accidentally pressed that just to get the shot off of Duncan. And I'm shooting with Clay. Uh, Clay's definitely our best free throw shooter anyway, so no problem with that. Even a terrible release still goes in. Hope maybe hold and let go of L2 job. Might get me in. And um, we hit Duncan. Gives Shea Gills Alexander for three. Who knocked it down? Okay, LeBron's open. Duncan. Nope. I am overthinking this. I am really overthinking every single play I make. I can't just burn by people with Dominique Wilkins. Trying to go to the basket with him obviously is not working so far. And we're just making dumb. Like, just dumb plays every single possession, like. They come up and spin him if he switches. Let's go, we got him, we got him, we got him, fake. No, come on. There's actually no way for me to beat him. Like, I can't beat an off-ball player off the dribble with Dominique because he doesn't have the dribble moves. I can't blow by, I can't use take advantage of the blow-by animation because he can't use the blow-by animation because he doesn't have the badge. And he's just... For a 95 overall, Neek. And this is the worst Dominique we've we've probably seen in 2K, apart from obviously the really low overall Spurs ones. Okay, we should have something decent here. Fade away, green, there we go. That was a very high degree of difficulty shot that we took right there though. Get ahead of steam, ahead of steam, he got downhill. No, we couldn't get any, not that, get the spin. We're inside, fade away. Shoot the fade, shoot the fade. Bit of space and he cannot hit it. Full white. Like, as good as I could possibly release that, just couldn't hit it. And they go and make the layup with Giannis. We are down 15-6, to six and I cannot get a shot with Dominique Wilkins. Toss it up. Nope. Like, I know I'm doing really dumb stuff, but trying to do actual smart things, I can't. I still can't get a shot with Dominique. I can't actually get a shot with him. That's just unlucky. He dribbled it off his foot. And we are down by 12 points to a very average team because I simply cannot score with the guy that I'm trying to score with. It's not a good shot. Board, Shea. Come on, Nick, run the break. Straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line. Got stripped by Chris Wet or by Chris Mullen? Really? Okay, so he's made one nice fadeaway and two basically open layups. Good defense there. So actually, we brought it back to eight at the end of the first. Um, as bad a performance as I've ever had in a gameplay. Hopefully, we can go and get the lead in the second quarter, which we should be able to. We should be able to, so not too worried. Am I, like, I'm saying this right now. 2K20, like, the ideas in my team are unbelievable. Like, all the, like, producers, the guys that have made, guys that have made like, Evo cards... Releasing content, obviously something like Yanis today was a bit ridiculous, but in general, the amount of content we're getting is great. The game, this is the worst 2K gameplay we have ever had. And it's not even close. Like, this is a f fundamentally, this is flawed as both a basketball game and a basketball simulation. It's like, it doesn't know what it wants to be. It's like it doesn't know whether it wants to be a video game or a simulation, and because of that, it doesn't do either of them right. And I hopefully, hopefully at some stage we get in the next generation. Like even if NBA Live takes more arcadey route and it actually works as a video game, I will gladly take that. And I don't mean like NBA Street. I just mean like that if you do, if you release if perfect five times in a row, it'll be five greens instead of three greens and two full white glitches, things like that. And if you, like that's how a video game is meant to work, there shouldn't be too much luck elements in it, especially when you're playing online. Snatch back into the three. Giannis can't hit it. 
We're actually playing some really good defense here. Our offense is just what's struggling right now. Uh, okay, I'm good with that. Blow by him. One more. Bang, bang. Back to two. We're there. Good steal, Giannis. Right to the basket. Giannis with the dunk. Tie game. I wonder if we'll win this game, though, because this is a Wilkins gameplay, and I'm going to run, start running through him a lot more in the third and fourth still. And obviously, as I've shown what I've done when he isn't on the floor, and when I'm not running through him, how much I'm beating this guy by. But I just wonder if using um, Wilkins for the whole second half, I can still win this game. Because no guarantee of that. Oh, Yanis is right there with the block. Come on. You really, really think I'm going to let you do that? Green in his face by Gilbert Arenas. Green's a free throw. So, fairly confident that I can say Yanis is a game changer here. And how did Miracan have the speed to get to the basket there? It's all good, though. We got them on the break with Yanis to the basket. Doesn't matter. Jams it on. Doesn't matter if he's glass clean or takeover. He's still completely just dominating this game. Let's go. Yanis is burning him off his speed. Goes right to the basket. And he actually missed this time. That's strange. That doesn't normally happen. And Paul George completely clamps up Brandon Ingram. Get Gilbert Arenas. Snatch back into the deep three. And Gilbert Arenas hits it. So we actually have an 11 point halftime lead. After being down, was it 12 points? Go baseline maybe. Nope. Fade away. Maybe. Just maybe. There we go. Knocks that one down. That's the only way I can get a shot with him, Mike. Not getting a shot with him any other way. Because he's not quick enough and there's no real way of me beating an off-ball in Pierce. And like, off-ball defense isn't even that overpowered this year. Like, last year, because there was no blow-by at all, there was no way to beat off-ball. But now, because he can't blow-by, he can't really beat off-ball. But That's why not quick for a step badge. Like, really, unless it's a power forward or center, you want quick first step on your th your point guard and two wings. And you need it on a point guard, but you want it, you definitely want it on the wings. You got the break. Let's go. Lee says he's got a step on him to the basket. Finally! Gets a dunk. That's 10 points for him. Go straight at me. That's terrible. You got the break. One more dribble. Take it that way. Easy layup. Let's go. Once he gets on the break, he's fine. Just offers nothing in the half-court setting. Okay, and he's actually already got ahead of steam. Don't need to worry about the quick first step. And he gets the dunk. Okay, he's now got takeover. He should be able to burn them with the takeover. Get a couple of quick scores here. Oh, it's ours. It's ours, is it? One of us go get it. Nope. Uh, we're fine, though. Way back with LeBron. And someone's injured. It is Mullen. <coughs> Unfortunately, he's probably out for like 200 games. That is not good. Best thing this guy should do is probably, I'm not even gonna say rage quit. He should probably dashboard. Because, actually no, Mullen's only worth like two or 3K, but Mullen's probably gone for about three seasons worth of games. Did that just happen? Did any of you guys see that? It triggered a cutscene while he was in the middle of shooting his free throws. And because he tapped square, it gave him a very early. To the basket, Dominique Wilkins puts, misses the layup. I know it was covered, but he's got takeover. Right to the basket, we managed to get him on the spin and it's a good finish by Dominique. He's actually gonna shoot more than 50%, which is better than a lot of people I do gameplays with. That's a great block there by Tim Duncan. Dominique. Falls up. Okay, release. Can't hit it. Okay, that's a tough shot, and he made it. All right. Like that, he's hit some decent shots. And they're hacking at it. Nope, we go right to the basket, and they hack. So this guy has just paused the game, like pretty much paused the game at three times. So now I'm going to show you guys the box score in case he paused again. So 50% of the field, 7 to 7, plus and minus, uh, plus minus of 0, which is crazy in 25 point win. And didn't even take a three-pointer with him. So let's win this tip. Let's spam passes. And let's make sure that this guy cannot stall anymore. Spam. And he's trying to fail. I know that. And there we go. 
So anyway, that's the video. Um, I said it earlier on, this guy is probably in the, not even the third tier of small forwards, to be honest. I'd put him in like a tier with like Jamal Mashburn. I wouldn't even put him in the same tier as like El Trials pretty well. He's not as good as Ingram. Purvis Short, he'd be similar to. He's not as good as Tatum. You know what? I don't have the card here, but he is a slightly better version of Terrence Ferguson. And I don't mean like significantly better. I mean slightly better. This card is not very good. And you guys might be saying, oh, he's got a great dunk. How relevant is that? How relevant is that when he's not particularly fast, can't go to the basket particularly well, can't play particularly good defense, but isn't terrible on defense. And then you've got... Terrence Ferguson, who's got some insane badges, including gold clamps, which is better than any badge he has. And also, it got quick first step with a similar dunk and can shoot the ball basically similar. He is no better than Terrence Ferguson. So, if you have this card, just sell him. Please. Please sell the card. There are so many better and cheaper alternatives and just save your MT for a different time. But anyway, that's the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.